Hi, um, this video is going to be a breakdown of the symbols and sacred geometry used within an engraving. This engraving is by Gustave Doré. It is from uh, Paradise Lost, which is a classic tale by George Milton. The story is about Lucifer as an angel and, and the angels in heaven realizing that they can be their own masters and they don't need a god and shouldn't have to serve god. And so um, they rebel and it's the, the story of their descent into hell. And this is um, rebel angels falling into hell. And it is loaded with all sorts of really cool mathematic tools. And these same tools go right into a lot of the right hand path magic that we study. A lot of the sacred teachings, a lot of, um, yeah, the, the mystery school stuff. So let's dive in and I hope that you find this interesting. Um, let me know. And yes, please check out Paradise Lost. It's incredible. It's, it's a great story. All right, let's go. So here we have the engraving of the angels falling into hell. And the first thing we're going to lay out is the golden spiral, a golden ratio. And that's what this looks like. We've definitely mentioned it in other videos. If you are unfamiliar, I would definitely check out the Donald Duck cartoon that's either on YouTube or on my Patreon, and it goes through some sacred geometry basics in a really clearly illustrated way. But the way to measure phi and the way that we find it uh, represented in nature is by taking one unit of something, multiplying it by 0.618 of itself, and then adding that back to the one unit or the unit before it whatever was multiplied by 0.618 and adding those together ends up with 1.618 of that unit and that creates this ever evolving spiral of creation. And now that we've gone over that we can go over the layout here. Um, you can notice right away the big square that takes over the bottom half it pretty much bisects not completely in half because it's in phi but um, you see that it goes from very light to very dark very quick. Uh, it goes from earthly things like stone and the tree root and the sky and the rain to mankind. If we flip that spiral, we get to zoom in and look that this curve really does give us the structure for the clouds. Um, and we can start paying attention to where the squares get smaller and the intersections uh, at which the squares meet and the spirals come through those squares. The origin of the word for the occult is unseen. And one of the biggest symbols in mystery teachings and occult teachings is the compass. Um, the lessons are there for those who have the eyes to see them. And I'm going to point something out to you right now. This shape right here is kind of a nod to a compass. Um, it, it kind of hugs that spiral that we have, but the compass is a primary tool for a lot of secret teachings. And it represents the ability to measure. It's the math of the universe, the square, and the compass. Another thing that you'll see a lot of in this image, but also a lot of images that, that hide these secret messages, is uh, a lot of highlighting on the dick. See how that spiral kind of zones in? We will be seeing that a few times here. Um, it's not just lust, obviously. It's, it's kind of the sense of creation itself. Uh, because of reproductive organs, man is able to procreate, and it is a kind of the original understanding of human creation. So if we take that spiral and just rotate it 90 degrees and tuck it in the corner, we now have a new way to break this down. Um, we now see a different kind of life and creation. We see this plant wrapping into the spiral, and um, even though it's like a kind of grizzly plant, it is front and center, it is bathed in light, and it is a form of creation that these beings no longer get to enjoy because they broke the rules. So now if we stack another golden rectangle on top of our first one, we get to break this down even more. Um, the top square, the biggest square in the yellow rectangle is again mostly earth, plant, water, light, and then the next one down is mankind. There's a lot more darkness there. And um, as we look, we can see that the bottom curve kind of goes along with these wings and uh, kind of frames out where these angels' bodies fall. And so I'm going to continue. I'm going to put another golden rectangle in this space. So now with this one, we can see that this bottom rectangle uh, really does follow the curve of that angel and it, it makes you want how much they really planned these pieces. 
And here we can just take that same yellow one from before and move it over. And again, we still have this beautiful guide following the curve of this angel's body. I'm going to take a break from spirals and go with a pentagram. So let's just drop a five pointed star right in the center. Um, you'll notice it's obviously not perfectly cut because he's drawing rocks. But if we look in that center, we see that life itself is in the center of it. Um, the five pointed star is loaded with mathematical references and, and, and sort of fractal possibilities because you can fit itself inside itself infinitely and it can grow outward into bigger versions of itself infinitely. If we take those lines that make this and just extend them, we now see that Doré saw this and made the areas outside of this even darker and focused the falling angels within these lines. If we extend all of them, we see even more that the angels have almost like slices of this piece to belong in. It's just really cool. I, I'm finding this all out as I make these videos, just so you know. So let's invert that and drop it back down and look how this lines up. We have a really easy dissection of some really cool stuff. Here you can really see that Dory really did look at this. If you notice, we have these sections of black on the sides where it's set back and angels' bodies to focus on. Now this part is purely my speculation. Once I saw how seemingly intentional these breakdowns of slices of this pentagram were, it did really remind me of a lot of the secret teachings and a lot of occult teachings that dissect the being of human, uh, mostly mankind, because we're hundreds of years ago where only men mattered. Um, if we look at this, we have a representation of mind. Next, we have a slice of the representation of body. Next, we have uh, that wing, that, that presence of uh, spirituality. Next, we have, again, we're going to go back to that dude's junk. This is the creative power of man. This is uh, procreation and creation itself. Uh, and lastly, underneath, we have that empty space of shadow, the unknown, the darkness. Um, I would compare this to, to Jung's shadow side. And then all of these things come together and every facet of it creates an individual, which is resting Looks like he's floating, he's obviously falling, but this is the components that make up this living creature. Got one more section for you. With all the stuff that I was able to point out, um, I wanted to see if there was anything hidden in these weapons. So I lit them up and then I extended the lines that they would make if they were continuous straight lines. And the first thing I notice is the intersection of the six points. And yes, it's on another dude's crotch. Um, again, it's the, the creative potential of man. Um, and on top of that, we also seem to see these slices in which each angel has its own little slice to exist in. And to bring it all back to the beginning, if we take one of our earliest golden rectangles and just drop it back in, we see that that intersection of the four lines on the left meets right at the spiral. And that's really cool. I don't, I don't know what specific intention Doré had with this, but it was very obvious that Doré knew what he was doing and was planting things to be found. So find them. Things are there to be seen. Uh, this is it for this video. Um, this is what it looks like once we layer everything that we talked about on top of itself. So hopefully you liked it. Uh, I want to do more of these. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.